this subject is a very hot topic and also very difficult. And also we have to understand exactly what it is. And I'm going to introduce you, Peter Holworth. So we're going to try to keep this on track, on time, in focus. We're trying to keep this civilized, not make it into a big shouting match or anything else. So I studied um, killer whales in the wild for my PhD dissertation. I worked with the northern residents in Johnston Strait in British Columbia. And I also stopped at the Vancouver Aquarium whenever I went up north to do my work. I went to the University of California in Santa Cruz for my PhD. And whenever I stopped there, I was very, you know, happy to go behind the scenes to see Hayak, Yossa, and uh, Finna. But the longer I did my work up in British Columbia, the more I noticed how small the tanks were in this facility. And that's when I really started feeling that there was something wrong with the practice of keeping these animals in captivity. To me, this is a community issue. It's obviously an international issue as well. I'm not sure if it was mentioned, but I would like to uh, reiterate, if not iterate, that uh, SeaWorld and, and several people from the, w representing the captivity industry were invited uh, for participation in tonight's panel. And uh, my understanding is that everybody who Hiroko invited uh, declined for, I'm not sure what the reasons, uh, but this was intended to be as open of a conversation as possible. And yes, we do want to invite the questions. Some of you may have seen the movie The Cove um, and have seen the close connection between dolphin conservation and dolphin captivity and how intimate the two can be and unfortunately still are. There are orcas uh, languishing in captive facilities. Right now, even in the US, one orca named Lolita, who is by herself, sometimes they throw in a few dolphins, bottlenose dolphins, to keep her company. Uh, they know her family. There's a reintroduction effort that uh, would, would be really wonderful to pursue. Um, I don't consider myself somebody who's anti-captivity myself. I was trained as a, as a scientist. I love the scientific method. And I'm also a naturalist. And there's inherent appreciation of seeing these animals who have evolved for millions of years being in the environment to which they are so superbly and divinely adapted. It's not a matter of getting rid of the captive facilities. It's about them being the best they can be. And now that we know more, we can do more and we owe more to the marine mammals who are in our care now. And uh, I think we know better than to remove them from the wild anymore. The uh, ability of the human species to understand another species, which in my opinion, uh, can teach us a lot and happens to occupy, say, 70% of the planet. I've seen a lot of damage. I've seen a lot of these animals being captured and thrown in jail. Uh, we didn't know any better. We've doing what we're doing to communicate with the public. We want to make sure that education goes out there, is being shared with as many people as we can. We're not there to point fingers. We are there to provide the information. You can make a difference to communicate with our decision makers that they have an opportunity to be ahead of the game and make sure that they can look in their, the eyes of their children and their grandchildren and say, hey, look what is going on today and how much we're going to learn from these amazing creatures. I started out as a collector of marine mammals for people like the US Navy and others. And many years ago, uh, out here in Santa Barbara Channel on the other side of Santa Cruz Island, uh, we caught a pilot whale. It was back in the old days, in the 60s or so, early 70s, and it was a great white hunter bring him back alive thing. We weren't hurting him, we were catching him. We thought this was just a wonderful, grand adventure. So we caught this pilot whale, and after about seven hours before we could finally subdue it, bring the animal aboard the boat we had and put it on a soft foam stretcher, water it down, take it into a captive pin. The boat was slow, it was about a seven or eight knot boat and all the way back the animal was vocalizing a lot, it was crying out 
and the pod of whales followed it for the longest time. They were vocalizing as well. They were right there, right next to the boat, which we'd never seen before. And something inside me snapped, and I thought at that point, this great white hunter stuff is really not what I want to do. And none of the rehab centers really have the bucks to hold these animals in captivity and find out about them. Uh, SeaWorld of San Diego rehab two gray whale calves, successfully released them back in the wild. Um, I can't put a gray whale in my backyard. Uh, none of the other rehab centers are able to do that sort of rehab. So there's some good things that have come from all this over the years. And yes, now we're, we're thinking in a different direction. Okay, we have the information we need. We don't need to do this. But I guess the other question would be at this point, if, if we do eliminate this, who's going to rehab whales? Killer whales in particular are cultural animals and are very different depending on where you find them. They have different dialects, they have different foraging strategies. Those are all learned behaviors. So if you've been raised in captivity, that's all you know, that is your culture and it's actually a very um, uh, abnormal one. And so in the end, um, I think captive-born animals are going to have to be cared for for the rest of their life. I'd like to see breeding stop. But wild-caught animals, in some cases very recently wild-caught, I see no reason why they can't be rehabilitated and returned to the wild. Let's go up there to watch them in the wild. And if you cannot see them in the wild because you live in Topeka, Kansas, uh, you can have a, a, th a theater, 3D theater, right there in your community, and you can learn and interface with them as much as you want after four and a half years to release Keiko. And in as much as Keiko was free, and he was free, uh, he couldn't disconnect himself from humans. So he was not a real orca in the wild. Uh, what do we learn from that? Absolutely nothing. So, uh, or see, we learned that we shouldn't, we shouldn't put them in captivity. Being somebody who studies the individual psychology of, of dolphins uh, to the extent that we can, um, as, as we mentioned, they have culture and uh, unique cultures, dialects. They also are individuals, and some individuals, uh, perhaps similar to some humans and other animals, respond differently to a life of captivity and perhaps to the trauma of seeing their parents killed in front of them during a capture. For example, Tilikum, who is in Blackfish. Um, Tilikum is an orca who has undergone a lot of stress and is exhibiting abnormal behavior and aggression towards people. So we have to assess it, them all individually, but there are always sanctuaries. We don't always have to have them jumping through hoops. We can give them the dignity they deserve to live as natural of a lifestyle as we can and perhaps learn more in the process ourselves about them. Let's not give up on, on developing the means to be able to release even captive born animals back into the wild. We proved it could be done at least with pinnipeds, and admittedly they're a different creature, but we did do that. We're a coastal community, so we really share this coastal environment, and when we help, in my opinion, one dolphin, one pinniped, seal or sea lion, we're really helping everybody in our community. I mean, we can learn so much and so exciting, and kids today, whether you take them out to see them in the wild or you take them and see a, a very beautiful motion picture where you're going to have the behavior which takes months or years to, to put together, like my father has done about other things, uh, they will be much, much better decision makers. And I can assure you, they will never be people in the industry of captive animals or in government who will do what we do today. Marine mammals are highly intelligent, and as such, we have abundant evidence of, of their intelligence. They're much smarter than fish. And it's funny, but the more intelligent an animal is, the more subject it is to stress. Millions of people know anything they know and everything they know about these animals by going to places like SeaWorld.
And if they are not being told the truth, and if they are not getting accurate information, there is a problem. I want SeaWorld to stay in business. I want it to evolve. I want it to do what it says it's doing. And that, that must start with not exploiting these animals anymore. The things that are not on the table for negotiation are end to breeding, end to artificial insemination, and end to import and export. These 10 whales will be the last 10 whales in California. Federico Binko has uh, done a marvelous job of organizing this event. Thank you so much, Federico. And thank you very much to the Santa Barbara Maritime Museum for providing this great venue.